Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be working on putting more armor on the Jeep. Right behind me I have Metal Cloak's rear armor. It's their extended wraparound corner guards and this will also allow me to install Metal Cloak's rear fenders onto that armor. So I think this is really going to improve the look of the Jeep while also being practical and keeping it safe from things like rocks and sticks beating up on it. It was shipped pretty well. As you can see behind me, they're kind of stuck together with bolts and two by fours. It kept them nice and rigid and safe in the box. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that apart and then we can get on with the installation. Here's a quick up close look at the armor. I opted for the black finish put on there. I think that's about an extra hundred bucks for pretty much anything you order from Metal Cloak. You can get it either bare metal or with this finish. So hopefully this is a nice rugged finish that was worth the money. Metal Cloak does have instructions for their installations. If you just Google Metal Cloak instructions, you can then click that link and it'll take you in there and it's very easy to find the instructions for whatever you bought from them. So I'm gonna try and follow along with these. In the past, I've not been thoroughly impressed with their instructions, but it's better than not having any. So according to the instructions, the first thing it says to do is to remove the rear fender flares and then that plastic inner wheel liner. And then it says to remove the brake light off of there, which is gonna be a little extra work for me because I've run some grounds to this and I've got my radio antenna mounted here. And then it says to remove the license plate mount and then also to remove the plastic for the fill spout here. So you'll take that off as well. This isn't too technical. Most of them are just a few screws like this. So nothing I think I need to show in detail. And I, obviously I can't show you the fender flare because I've already removed it, but that was also pretty easy. That was just a few of these bolts through here. And then the wheel liner was just on there with like plastic clips. So you can just pretty much tug that out. So I'm gonna put you on a hyperlapse and remove these three things. So this is where being a guy who has way too many hobbies comes in handy. I have a ton of clamps from woodworking. So I mocked the sheet up here, the armor, and I clamped it down. What you want to pay attention here is that you get the holes lined up. That way you can get your bolts back in. And then over here, it was still a little off. So I actually put these screws back in for the uh, fuel cap to help hold it and line up the holes. And then the rest kind of lines up. I'm not really even sure that I need these. We'll find out. Maybe I just end up drilling them wider for the uh, rev nuts. But yeah, everything came out pretty decent. I don't love this gap down here and I don't love this gap either, but I may either cut this out for more of like a mod cut or just paint it black. That way it kind of blends better with the armor. Same thing over there. Uh, not totally sure, but yeah, I don't know. All in all, I think it looks pretty good, especially with the moto built armor I've added on there. So the next step is to center punch all of these holes. So I'm gonna drop you on another time lapse here and I'll center punch all those and then you are to drill them first, a pilot hole with a 1 8 inch drill bit. So I'll probably leave you on that for the pilot holes too, and then I'll get back with you guys. So this is where it would be good to have the instructions. Next, we have to drill some of the holes to three, I don't know why it's turning that sideways, I'm not moving the camera. We have to drill some of the holes to three eighths and it's only the holes that are marked with the uh, green triangle that we actually drill to three eighths. So here's that if you guys wanna see it and don't think you need the instructions, but the instructions might help just for reference. And then this is for the passenger side. So now I'm going to start drilling everything out to three eighths, which kind of sucks because my three eighths inch bit is pretty chewed up and dull. So if you revert back to that diagram I showed you earlier, there are two blue squares on there that you have to draw out to a half inch. So you take the armor off first and then you'll drill these two holes.
So actually with those two half inch holes, uh, I ended up not marking those when I had it up there because it's these threaded areas that it's calling for you to drill that half inch hole at. So I'm not really understanding because the flare will kind of go over top of that and then you'll just screw through the flare into the threaded little nuts earth there. So I'm not sure why you'd have to drill a hole in the Jeep. Uh, so I'm gonna hold off on that and do the rest of the install and try and figure out what exactly that's calling for. And if I do need to drill the hole, once I get everything else mounted, I can get it all lined up perfectly again and then mark that hole and then drill it if I need to. So I'm gonna hold off on that one. Okay, so back to that diagram. There are four spots that are supposed to be drilled out with a 17 30 seconds drill bit, which is just got awful annoying. It's an odd size. My Lowe's doesn't even have any in stock. Obviously it's too late for that anyway, but I checked their website. I'm gonna drill those out to half inch and see if I can make it work without making it too sloppy. If not, I'll pause this for a day or two and order one, I guess. Okay, and those holes are gonna be meant for rib nuts. So we'll see if those fit real quick. For Metal Cloak's rib nuts, they've included kind of a very simple tool, which is essentially a bolt where the threads have been drilled out and a nut with a lock washer. So this is their tool. The nut has no threads left on it, so it just slides. And then you have this locking washer, and then you have the bolt. So you basically take the rib nut, screw it on there all the way, you would push that into the hole and then you would put a wrench on this which is an 11 16 and then this bolt is a 9 16 so you'll hold the nut and tighten the bolt and you will feel it tighten and squish this down and you don't want to go too hard where you will strip it out but you you should be able to feel it bottom out and get nice and tight you can youtube it metal cloak has a pretty good explanation of how to use it but it's really that simple you hold the nut and you tighten the bolt. I hope that holds. I didn't love anything about that. My camera died last night, but I didn't do too much else after that. I put in these three rivet nuts, uh, same method as I used for the one on the back. So, you know, just two wrenches and tightening it until it gets a really good snug squish on there. I also sprayed some spray paint in a little cup and kind of stuck my finger in it and rubbed some paint and all these holes I drilled just to keep it from rusting. Nothing very professional, but it'll all be covered anyway. Okay, so now I'm gonna start actually mounting it. The hardware they include is stainless steel, so you're gonna to wanna to make sure you use anti-seize with them. And then you got two sizes of bolts. You have a one inch length and a one and a quarter. The majority of it will be the one inch. The one and a quarter is used for the fender mounts. It goes with these little brackets and I'll show you that in more detail when we get there. For now, I've taken 15 of the one inch bolts and put washers on them just to speed up the process. And then with that, I will be using these nylon nuts on the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss you on a hyperlapse real quick and start getting this mounted. So a couple things to go over real quick that I just went through putting this on is it was really hard to get these nut zerts started or the bolts into the nut zerts started. So maybe start with these before you get anything going because those are pretty easy to strip. So that got a little scary. I'm um, talking about these. These also just use those same one inch bolts and there's just no nut on the other side. So just bolt and washer. And then in the back here, I kind of put these all in and got down here and I couldn't get this one to line up great. So I was kind of adjusting it to make it fit and it got just a little tight and that thing, that nut zert started to spin on the other side. So I had to take all these bolts out and scoot it over some so I could get onto it with that horrible little tool they had. And uh, I did it 
tried to tighten it and do it again and it got tight again and then I started to put the bolt back in there and it started to spin again and if those start to spin it's a nightmare because then you can't loosen your bolt to get it back out so that's not fun at all so I've decided to just leave that one out it left a little gap over here not putting that one in but out of all of them this is probably the best one to not have work because it's the most hidden so in my next video i'm going to install the metal cloak rock sliders right here and that'll kind of complete this armor system i've got so if you're not subscribed make sure you subscribe so you get notified when that video releases so the next step is to put the bolts through here with the backing plates and i'll show you what those look like so for these you use the longer inch and a quarter bolts with a washer and then the backing plate will actually go on the inside of the fender like this and then you will stick the bolt through. This is basically your threaded nut on the other side. And then that'll allow you to mount Metal Cloak's fender flares right here. Speaking of the fender flares, earlier in the video, I pointed out that in the instructions, it called for you to drill the hole where this is, but this is already threaded. So the fender kind of sits on here and just threads into that. And I'm glad I didn't drill that hole because I checked it now that it's on there, the bolt's not long enough where it needs to actually have any more clearance, it just threads into here. So I don't know if these instructions are kind of from an older design, but there is no need to drill the hole there because it's threaded onto the armor. Just to show you again, right here is where it says to drill anything marked with the triangle, star, or square with a 1 8 inch drill bit. And that is where the threaded spot is that I don't need to drill, and that is the other one. So I'm thinking this was an earlier design before they actually added it onto the armor. So those are easy enough to put on as long as your holes are lined up. Just hold the backing plate over the hole and screw these in. And if you're gonna install a fender flare, leave these loose because the fender flare will slide down over them. If you are not, you can go ahead and tighten them all the way. So now it's time to start reinstalling the stuff you had to remove earlier. That'll include the fill spout, the taillight, and the license plate bracket, which I'm just now looking and I don't actually see a spot to mount the license plate bracket. Are you supposed to drill your own holes? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Okay, so it says just reinstall the license plate holder on there. And yeah, so I guess I just assume you'll figure out where to drill the holes and make it all work. Instead of putting that big plastic bracket on that kind of sticks out of the side, I've seen other people do this and I think it's time I do it. I'm just going to put my license plate on there and I put a slight bend in it so it kind of goes with the curve and then doesn't really stick out to catch any rocks or sticks or anything. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I think I'll just drill a couple pilot holes and then use some small sheet metal screws and just hold the license plate on there like that. Man, I'm having a rough day today. The sun is just melting me. This self tapper broke now, right here where this one is messed up for that bolt to hold it to the body. So when that was screwing in, it spread the armor away from the tub and then snapped. So it was held like that far away from the tub. So I had to drill that out. Now I've got this ugly hole. I'm just gonna leave it. It's a license plate. Uh, three out of four bolts is way more than enough to hold it. One other thing is I'm gonna have to buy longer bolts that mount taillight to the tub because this bracket needs to go behind there too. And even now with just the armor, those screws that are in there could barely bite. So there's no way I can get my antenna mounted back up there until I buy longer bolts to screw through there. So one step forward, about four steps back and the whole time I'm being scorched to death by the sun. So it's a fun day today. All I can think is that I have a whole nother side to do still. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the fender real quick just because I have it. And I'll show you guys how to do that. It's extremely easy. And you've got two of these, the bolts for those came with the fender. So you'll kind of slide it down over those four bolts and then pop the ball section of the fender over these. And then you've got the two bolts that go in to those two spots and then you'll just tighten those.
so I guess I was wrong. Maybe you're supposed to do it like that, but I could not get it on there with both those bolts in. So I took this one and this one out, and then I was able to slide it down on those and line these up. I think it looks pretty good. It's coming along. And I do plan on painting this moto build armor I installed in the last video. I'm gonna paint it black to match. Once I get the rock sliders in there, it'll be black all the way back. And then you'll see the light khaki metallic that my Jeep originally came in, kind of peeking through here and there, which I think complements it well and kind of goes with the rims. All right, so that is the driver's side done. And I think I've earned a break. I haven't had breakfast yet, it's about 1 p.m. So I'm gonna cool down, drink some water, eat some food real quick and come back. I don't think I'm gonna go into detail on the passenger side. It should pretty much be the same as the driver's side with small differences. It should actually be a little easier because there's less on that side to take off. But if I do notice any differences with it, I will be sure to point those out to you. But other than that, tell me what you guys think of the Jeep in the comments. How's all this armor looking? Just to show you how this one lines up, after it's all clamped down and everything, these holes, I think they'll work, but they are not the best. They're not as good as the other side was. And I mean, it's very well lined up everywhere else. So I don't think it's my fault. I think the holes are just drilled a little off, but I, I believe it'll work. One other thing, this is probably gonna have to wait another day or two because how terrible it was to do these rib nut holes on the other side with that weird kind of nut and bolt combination that Metal Cloak gave you. I said the hell with it on this side. I ordered a new fitting for my riveting tool, so that'll be here tomorrow sometime, and I'll probably finish the installation then because I'm not using that nut and bolt thing again. That was a pain, and one of them didn't work very well. So I'm gonna try and do it better with the tool this time. It's much easier that way. So that's the passenger side done now too. Uh, this side went a little smoother, probably because I learned a little bit on the driver's side. There are some mild indiscrepancies with how it lines up. Again, I don't think it's really Metal Cloak's fault. I think it's just my Jeep since I've done body work on it. But this gap is a little bigger than on the other side. Mainly what I did was line up the bottom edge so it wasn't overhanging. So yeah, I guess the edges could be different now from me replacing the rockers. But other than that, I mean, it's not that noticeable and it looks pretty good. So a couple tips on some things I learned. I started with the rivet nut bolts this time. On the other side, I think I started somewhere up top and it was kind of hard to get those lined up. And it was causing some issues. So this time I started with the bolts that have the rivet nuts. So I got those all lightly in there first, a few threads, and then I did the rest of them before I tightened anything. Another thing that really helped on this side was I got the correct mandrel and nose piece for my rivet tool. And yeah, that made putting those rib nuts in there way, way easier. Another thing that I think is kind of important to do is that these tiny little bolts that hold the taillight on, they're too short once you add the armor. I mean, they only bite a couple threads and if you start to actually tighten it where it gets a little snug, it'll just start to spin again. So I'm gonna go to Lowe's and see if I can find a longer version of this and the right thread and everything in size. And yeah, I think that'll be probably pretty much required for most people. So that's gonna start wrapping up this video. In the next video, I'm gonna be installing the rocker guards or rock rails or rock sliders, whatever you wanna call them. I'm gonna put those on and that's gonna complete my armor. And once that's all completed, I'm gonna get it all painted up to match. So I think it's gonna look pretty good. So be sure to check out that video. So I'm trying to work on improving these videos a little bit. I'm trying to get that perfect balance of information, but not too much unnecessary video. So if you liked the video, let me know. If you didn't, 
Let me know that too. Just drop down in the comments and give me a little constructive criticism. Let me know what you'd like to see or like me to do better or see less of. I don't know. Thanks, guys.